Ladies and gentlemen, crown champion, legends of the arena. Couple things before we get started. One, there's no voice acting. So that leaves me with the never ending conundrum of do I read out text aloud or do I just sit silently and try to guess when people are done reading? For me, it's a little bit easier to do the latter, but people tend to enjoy my voice. So I suppose I'll give reading it out loud a try, but I'm not that great at reading and even worse at voice acting. So, huh. Secondly, this was gifted to me by the uh, publisher, actually, I believe. So I suppose I still have to declare that it was I received this for free for purposes of review, though that won't really impact my opinion of it. And three, this game is quite old school in the graphics, uh, very much like, um, I don't know, I guess like the era of Super Nintendo, I suppose. Not really sure if if old graphics is something that bothers you you're probably not going to enjoy this game. But it doesn't really bother me, and I think I might enjoy it. I've only played a little bit of it just to kind of get the bare bones basic controls and all that. So I'm going into this mostly blind, so it'll be a bit of a first impressions and review type thing as we go along here. As well as a quick look or perhaps a full on series if people would prefer, do let me know. I will will play the intro, but basically the king was killed, dude replaced him, and they plan on marching west. We stand at the death of an empire. For 300 years, the eight cities of the crown lands have been ruled by the ancient throne of Aldmore. Now the northern earls have risen up in revolt, and King Darius has been overthrown and executed by his own council. His former marshal, Adamar, has seized the throne, while much of the realm has returned to the days of squabbling petty kingdoms. In chaotic times such as these, it is possible for even a lowly commoner to rise high in the world. The people cry out for blood and entertainment. The brutal games of the arena provide both in equal measure. Now is your chance to establish a house and train a wealthy team of fighting slaves who might someday compete in the grandest of all arenas. Oh god, the text is too quick for me. Their glory will be my glory before the sun sets this once mighty empire. There is still time to cover all legend the legend of blood and steel. Whew. Oh my god, that was... Whew. This game's tough, guys. And there's just the general map. Greenwood, 29.7 AE. Like, I don't know what what system this these graphics compared to. Maybe like I don't know, I guess just old school PC perhaps, not even really a console. I, I don't know. Aslan spoke the truth then. Perhaps, my king. Earl Raymond is dead, but whether Aslan struck the killing blow is another matter. In the name of Nomos Days, I think. I wish it hadn't come to this. This is not your doing, my king. Raymond's foolish pride is to blame. Pride, Mogger? I would say it is his loyalty, but foolish all the same. His children must be taken alive. I have already overthrown one ruling dynasty this year, and you see the trouble it's caused me. You intend for his eldest daughter to become Countess of Greenwood? Of course, unless you believe that a 12-year-old girl would be too difficult to control. She will need a husband when she comes of age, one who can be trusted. A position you would like to fill yourself, my friend. A small reward for your efforts here today, I will serve as my king commands. I can think of no one more trustworthy. In a few years time, this province should be restored to its former stability. And then we march west? Yes, Mogger. And then we march west. <gasps> How that impacts me, I don't know. I suppose we'll find out. For I am just a humble Krug Dusky. A, uh, a Lanista, I believe is the term a trainer of slaves to gladiators. Now, none of these are very Krugdudski-ish. If you don't know what Krugdudski looks like, it is a bald guy with a fantastic chin, and I reckon this is about the closest we can get. Fleet Field, 301 AE. And now we're in. Controls are very basic, uh, just click on the map or click on the screen and you move there right click brings up the menu here we can view the two fighters that we currently start with we have Rick Hilda of Fleet Field and Weimar of Willow's Fall I don't think we're supposed to quite know about them yet 
but uh, we'll escape out of that. That's just that. Equip fighters, I don't really have anything to equip them with. Yeah, nothing. We'll be heading to the market soon. And then armory, we got nothing. And okay. 2,000 gold is what we've got. Ah, you must be the new owner of the estate. Welcome to Fleetfield, then. I am your steward, Matilda. You're not quite what I was expecting. If I may ask, how is it that a person like yourself happens to acquire such a large estate? Ah, inheritance, merc contract. Working as a merchant, saving gold for years. Particularly lucky wager. Could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. XCOM is top secret business, guys. I guess, uh... We'll just say we got lucky. Let's just say I've always been rather lucky at the gambling tables. Really, this must have been a particularly good day for you then. As I'm sure you've noticed, the estate has seen better days. It has been established for nearly 300 years, so they say, damn. It was previously owned by House Harcourt, who used it to house their team of fighting slaves. I understand you have interest in the arena games yourself. Fortunately, I have the experience to advise you on such matters. First things first, though, you must tell me the name of your house. That is your surname. Well, well, let me tell you. The recurring theme of Dudeski. Oh, nice. Then your faction will be known as House Dudeski, and I will address you as Master Dudeski. Is that correct? No, 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 I'm sorry. We need to, uh... Oh, oh shit. Uh. Oh god, how do I how do I backspace? Oh shit, I don't think I can. Oh. Hey, there we go. X does it. Excellent. This was probably most certainly definitely designed with a controller in mind, but my controller is super broken. Right, uh, X did that on the keyboard, though. We will be known as... Krug, then. House Krug. Address you as Master Krug, is that correct? Yes. Master Krug. Very good. Would you like me to give you a quick tour of the estate and the market before we begin? I'm sure I can explain a few things, most definitely. And this is as far as I made it. Wonderful, I'll start by heading over to the market. This is the market town of Fleetfield, the local hub of merchant activity. Here you can buy equipment for your slaves, restore buildings, and hire new staff. You've probably already noticed a number of derelict buildings on your estate. No, I haven't. The town seer can arrange for them to be restored or upgraded for a price. Oh, okay. So see the seer for housing and stuff. He can also find staff who will serve an important function in your house. Most staff members can't be hired unless there's somewhere for them to work. You must restore the library in order to hire a scribe, for example. As our reputation increases, we might also begin to add brand new improvements to the estate, such as a guard tower or a bathhouse. If you wish to buy or sell slaves, you will have to wait for a slave ship to dock in Fleetfield. That shouldn't take long. So I assume like, uh, like once a week in game or something, I can potentially get new slaves. So I can't just like, every time somebody dies, just, oh, buy another one real quick. I assume. Now, let me show you to your training yard. Okay. You could have showed me while we were here. <laughs> The primary aim of every faction is to produce a crown champion, a winner of the royal tournament. Champions are not born, they are made. Your fighters will earn experience through training and combat. Hiring a trainer will give your fighters much needed experience, but you may want to think about upgrading this training yard. Traditionally, there are six classes of fighting slave who fight in the crown sanctioned tournaments. The classes determine everything from the equipment your fighter may use to the style of combat in which they are trained. The six classes are bear, shadow, fox, tower, blade, and warrior. Okay, I was, a part of me was hoping it'd be the actual gladiator names, um, so we'll have to learn what all those mean. I can 
probably guess. There are certain rules to be obeyed. For instance, only bears, towers, and warriors can use heavy armor and heavy shields, right? Yes. However, foxes, shadows, and blades are permitted to yield two weapons in the arena. Okay. The classes have their own unique fighting skills, which your slaves will earn as they progress through their training. If you wish to learn more about the six classes, you might think about hiring a scribe. They could certainly teach you more than I can. Let's meet your fighting slaves now, shall we? <gasps> there they are! We currently have two fighting slaves in our cells, although neither of them have yet been tested in the arena. There's a fox named Rakilda of Fleet Field, and a tower named Weimar of Willow's Fall. He's got a cool chair in his room. Oh, she does too. There it is. It's hiding. They aren't much to look at right now, but perhaps one of them can be developed into a champion someday. We'll see. When your fighters win in combat, they not only increase their morale, but also the reputation of your house. As your reputation grows, you will be, we will be invited to compete in grander tournaments, which offer more prize money. However, losing fights or withdrawing from tournaments will decrease your reputation. Factions can fall just as easily as they can rise. Now, last but not least, you must understand the importance of maintaining the morale and support of your fighters. After all, an unhappy slave is more likely to try and escape. We wouldn't want that now, would we? Spartacus. Fighters may become unhappy if they are losing more fights than they're winning, not properly being fed, or if they are injured for a long time. A good doctor can significantly reduce injury time, so you might want to make restoring the infirmary a priority. Other ways to improve the morale of your fighters include giving them gifts, building a bathhouse, or hiring a pleasure slave. You could also try putting them in some easy fights. The first 10 gold pieces won in each fight will always go to the winning fighter, such as the tradition. Fighting slaves can buy their freedom after their savings reach 500 gold, so it's important not to overemploy your best fighters. Okay, so 50 fights. If I have a good enough relationship with your fighters, you might get to keep them a while longer. Okay. You will need to start paying them a salary, though. Good relationships are built on communication. Talk to your slaves regularly, learn their stories, build an understanding. They might not always be in a talkative mood, especially if the morale is load, load, low, but you should keep trying. See, I told you I can't read. I have trouble with it. I never read as a kid. I never, never ever did. I always faked it. Now I think we're done here. Let's head back to the main house. This is the main house where you will always be able to find me. Your private chamber is up those stairs, while the door to the other side leads through to the treasury. As your steward, I will mostly handle the financial affairs of your house. Every week I will deduct household costs, taxes, and staff wages from the treasury. These costs will increase over time. King Adamar certainly is fond of his taxes. Wares are expensive, I gather. As our reputation grows, we must begin to restore this estate to its former glory in order to maintain that reputation. Furthermore, the key members of your staff will begin to expect a fair share of the profits as we compete for more prize money. Always remember to keep an eye on the weekly budget. There's nothing worse for morale than not being able to feed your slaves, and staff will quit if they can't if you can't pay their wages. As someone experienced in such matters, I would advise keeping enough spare gold in the treasury to pay for the next couple of weeks. Ugh. But what good is gold if we're not spending it? Anyway, that completes the tour. I'll be waiting here when you're ready to organize this week's fights. And now we're turned loose. Excellent. So I don't know who this would be. That might be the scribe or something. Uh, skip this week. Let's check the weekly budget. Uh, costs and taxes will be 50 gold. Staff wages will become 10 gold. We have 2,000 gold, so we're good for, we're good for like forever, man. Fuck it. Spend all of our money. This is the treasury. Not a whole lot to look at. A few chests here and there. An open wardrobe. Hopefully, like, as we gain more money, this does actually just, like, start to fill and everything. That'd be awesome. Little things like that I love. And this is my private quarters up here. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I can't really do too much here, it seems. At all. All right. 
also we'll talk to the slaves then, I suppose. If we can. View their status. This is just their character sheet. Relationship zero, morale 60%. Not fantastic. Maybe it is, I don't know. Greetings, we're killed off Fleet Field. Greetings, Master. So, you were born right here in Fleet Field. That's right, a Fleet Field girl, born and raised. Makes it all the worse, really. The same people I grew up with can now see me behind bars. The men of Fleet Field taunt me. The women of Fleet Field use me as a cautionary tale for their children. How did I let it come to this? It's your own fault. Highborn nobles put you here, most likely? You're a commoner. I expect the nobles are to blame for your predicament. You are wiser than you look, master. You've hit the nail on the head. I suppose mine is a common story in certain ways. I'll tell you more of it another time. Okay. And here... Your morale is also 60%. Greetings, why more willows fall? I may not look busy, master, but believe me, I am. I'm currently tunneling through the stone wall beneath my bed. Okay, you, uh, keep up the good work, sir. Armory. Bathhouse? Library? What's this? Ah, the infirmary. With the addition of a few beds and the proper equipment, it could serve as one again. Okay. So we'll, head, we'll have to head to market and uh, probably pick up a scrap so I can learn more about the classes. We'll see what that costs and what the wages are like. Ooh, personal smithy. <gasps> oh, I want that. All right, let's head into town then. See how much stuff costs because I feel kind of rich. Uh, it's only like 60 gold to keep going. <gasps> A children has been born to King Adamar and Queen Alicinde. A healthy boy, so they say. It certainly set many tongues wagging about what this could mean for the line of succession. That person already has two children from her previous marriage, but it was Adamar who was proclaimed king by the royal council. Adamar doesn't have an ounce of royal blood, of course, which is why he married that person. She and her children are descended from Queen Essa, the lioness herself. Do you have any thoughts on the situation? I don't give two shits about politics. Fair enough, friend. Anyway, I suppose we had better get acquainted. My name is Hyman. I am the appointed seer of Fleetfield. I serve this town not only as a religious authority, but also as the leader of the local tradesmen's guild. If you wish to hire any new staff, that will need to be done through me. I can also arrange builders to make improvements to your estate. I will charge a modest fee, of course, but rest assured that much of it will go to the temple. In your profession, it is better to have the gods on your side, wouldn't you say? In addition to these services, I offer a variety of books, which should you desire to start keeping a library. So, what can I do for you? Uh, let's look at estate improvements. As your reputation increases, you might wish to take the opportunity to add some brand new improvements to the estate. However, this requires the support of some of your wealthy sponsors. You should focus on increasing the status of your faction for now. Okay, so worry about that later is what you're saying. Add a cell for an additional slave. Upgrade the training yard to get the trainer. The infirmary, I assume, just heals dudes up faster so they can get back into action sooner. Restore the mess hall, which would be where they uh, get fed and all that. We'll go for restore the library. Enables me to hire a scribe and start keeping books. Yes. Shouldn't take them more than a week. Okay, and then upgrade the mess hall. Yep, restoring it would allow me to hire my own cook. Yes. And can I hire them now or do I have to come back next week for that? Mm, 
Nice. Okay, so over time, the cook can be taught to provide healthy meals improving the constitution of fighters, rather than just buying the default shit from town. So it'll be cheaper in the long run. Uh, before you think about... Uh, right, I need to restore it first. Okay. Fine, fair enough. Um, buy books. Need to restore library first, right. Okay, fine. We'll, uh... Um, we'll leave it at that for now. You look to be a smithy. Oh, um, greetings there, master. Heard you moved into the estate up north. Right around town as you plan to establish a team of fighting slaves. Happy days. To be honest, we've been having a tough time of it lately, and this could bring in a lot of money. Since I'm the only blacksmith around, you'll be glad to know that I can provide you with basic weapons and armor. Very sir. Well, I ain't no professional weaponsmith or armor, but I do know how to swing a hammer. If you want fancy armaments, you're gonna need to hire a specialist to work at your estate. My stuff ain't half bad, though. So, what can I do for you today? Show me. Bye. Okay, so both Rakilda and uh, Weimar can use that. Gives them plus three. I have zero in possession. It costs 125. I have 1500 still. Uh, dagger's not that great for them. These two guys were... They were the heavier ones, weren't they? So I could, like, really equip them up with the heavy stuff. Plus 10, plus 12. Hot damn. Well, let's keep it basic. Get a couple of those. I like that I can play the game mostly just one-handed. This is really nice. And then they have short swords right now, which ain't which that which ain't great. And then leather boots, which is awkward to me because I thought gladiators usually fought barefoot. I thought was one of the things. I think that's one of like the official gladiator rules or something. They have to. But no matter, tis only a game. Would be nice to give somebody a buckler, too. We'll leave it at that for now, though. So, uh... Right-click? Ah, there we go. Ha! Ah. Who's this guy? Just some dude. Three of my sons are off fighting the wars. How am I supposed to keep my business going? What is your business? I might be able to help. Tell me more. I'm curious. And then this building. Looks to be the tavern type thing. Who's this guy? The traveler glances at you for a moment before turning away. He doesn't seem to have much to say. Yeah, I'm currently nobody. So, you're the one who bought the estate outside of town, eh? You should come back later in the week when we have our tournament. Things are a lot livelier then. And maybe you can blood some of these slaves of yours. Hmm. Okay, so we'll be back later. So, we'll... Leave? Question mark. Alright. I think it can only leave this way. Yeah. We'll head back up to the... Oh, there's a mess hall. I missed this. The fuck path was that? Jesus. Currently working on it. Oh, okay. That's why I missed it. And this is the training ground. The sandy courtyard in front of your cell block seems to have been used in the past as a training yard. You could restore this area and hire a professional combat trainer. Could. And will. At some point. Eventually. And this brings me into here. Right. Oops. Equip. Equip your head. Male coif. Gambeson. And barefoot. Okay. Then right click a couple times. Equip this guy. There we are. Excellent. So. I guess we'll head into here. Talk to you. 
enter a contest? Blood them at some small local establishments to begin with. They might only embarrass themselves at one of the larger city events, and the arena masters probably won't admit us yet in any case. To our good fortune, the Ale House right here in Fleetfield, Fleetfield hosts contests once every couple of weeks. At his Ale House, it's rather dingy, foul-smelling little tavern. I think I was just there. But one has to start somewhere. Ada herself is quite a character. Will we enter it? Sure. Hmm. 